him. He has quite a bit of knowledge that he's going to take us on a journey of uh, identifying what money really is to how to successfully go through the journey of saving and making money. How you doing, sir? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. It's an honor to be here. Good. <laughs> so um, you are an economic efficiency expert. What is that, Randall? And, and can you share your vision with that, how it started and how you got to where you are? Certainly. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today. Most people are frustrated as they look in the rearview mirror at their lives' monetary progress. We have compiled some manageable procedures to provide a financial GPS. This empowers them to safely concentrate on their windshields with the comfort that their treasures and legacies are organized. Now, the way economic efficiency engineering evolved was I got to looking at how confusing it is for many people. They're inundated with television and radio advertising from banks and financial planners. And many people think, what do I do now? Where do I go? How do I function? And many people feel priced out of the market. And it's a frustrating time for them. What can I do? And I say by the market, I'm talking about the overall financial dashboard. Many people are absolutely confused. And they run through week after week and month after month. And that evolves into year after year. And they start saying, what do I do and what did I do and what can I do? I think it's never too late to start. But the procedures that are in place in our culture today is really sad because so many people have a how much is it per month mentality. So if you'll recall, not too many years ago, people went to purchase a car and then they just said, how much is the car? And they determined whether or not they could get the car. In the 80s, as I recall, the onslaught of buy here, pay here car lots started taking advantage of people with high interest rates on cars and the mentality changed after a generation that people simply walked up to the car lot and said, how much is it per month? And by that very nature of that statement and that question, they never intend to own a car. They intend to pay for a car every month. Every month of their life, they intend to pay for a car. And because I got acquainted with some of the people in that industry, I learned that as soon as the person was nearly finished with their payments, capitalizing on that concept, they'd come in to make their monthly payment, and some of them were even weekly payments, and they would say, you know, you've done so well, we've got another car here, and we're thinking that we might like to put you into that. And what happens? The question comes over again. How much is it per month? Well, they've already been spending X for the car, and now for just a little bit more, they can spend Y. But what happens? They continually are losing money while the people who are selling those cars at usury interest rates are making the money. So therefore, I started working to compile a list of procedures and processes that could help people understand how to do that. So economic efficiency engineering is, what if we designed programs that would help people to go into every day, every month, and every year with a plan, a dashboard, a GPS, if you will, so that they're on the financial journey and this journey then all of a sudden gets them set in a position whereby they can concentrate on what they're doing, knowing that if they planned it correctly and they were empowered with a few solutions, secrets, and understanding of how the system works, that they could start making progress. So a few years back, 
I coined the phrase economic efficiency engineering. So I'd like to talk just briefly about something that is called lost opportunity cost. Lost opportunity cost. People calculate what it costs to go through their life on a monthly basis with their budget. And if they have a little extra, then they participate in some type of recreation for the weekend. And you notice that we start to plan for the weekend on Monday morning. And our culture and our television all participate in this. I'll remind you that uh, a few decades ago, one of the uh, beverage companies said, well, you can't wait for the weekend. I'm paraphrasing. They'd say you can't wait for the weekend. Then they brought Monday night football in to play. And then the beverage company started saying, put a little weekend in your life, in your week. Put a little weekend in your week. Now what's happening is people are spending money on things that we all know is not exactly healthy, but now they're not just doing it on the weekend because they're putting a little weekend in their week. Mm -hmm. And guess what's happening? They continue to hemorrhage money. The people who are the big, glossy advertising companies help you get excited about that product and how it's going to make you feel, and people start spending that money. So I worked through this process, watched multiple people have problems, and recognize what lost opportunity cost is. The lost opportunity cost is, if I would have disciplined myself, and we're in the Fort Wayne market, so let's just think back a few years ago, and you can, in any community across the country, recognize that there's a place that you remember where there were undesirable houses that could have been bought for just a few thousand dollars. In Fort Wayne, Indiana, with all of the development that's happened in downtown, you will recall that right where the Tin Caps Stadium is, just to the west of there, there were multiple homes that could have been bought for very inexpensive amount of money. The people who were buy here, pay here, buying cars that kept them on the wheel, the big wheel kept turning and they kept losing money and they kept putting a little weekend in their week. If they would have disciplined themselves and bought one of those little homes for a few thousand dollars, when the stadium was built, it changed the value of those homes extraordinarily. So you look back and say, what's the real cost? The real cost is that someone who could have afforded one of those inexpensive homes at the time and then made multiple hundreds of percent of profit as they were taken over to make space for that expansion in the football stadium and where the apartments are now, that is a lost opportunity cost because they didn't seize the opportunity. So a workbook has been developed called Making Sense Out of Money. Okay, right. So now we're going into the how can you change that's exactly that was right. that was my question then how can how can we change the mindset um to of the people so that we see what money really truly is exactly mm -hmm. so that's where this gps this dashboard comes into play mm -hmm. because many people are looking in the rearview mirror and they're thinking i'm not really happy with what i see there how do i change well the way to change is get a grip on where you are Remember that GPS will always come on. Some people refer to it as the navigator because she comes on and says, no, turn here, turn here. <laughs> but then she will also say recalculating. Recalculation is the first start, the first step to go in the right direction. So the making sense out of money uh, concept is to say, what are the certainties in our lives? We have two basic certainties, death and taxes. You may have noticed that one out of one dies. That's not pleasant to discuss, but it's the truth. 100% of all people die. So if we calculate what is it going to cost for me to die, then we put that into our system and we understand those that we love that we leave behind, are they being cared for in my absence? 
So part of making this sense out of money, it is important to know what are your plans? What would you like to have happen? Do you want a rabbi? Do you want a priest? Do you want a preacher? These are questions you say, well, how does that impact my today? It impacts my today because if you're going to provide for that, obviously, cremation is less expensive than burial. These are things that one must consider. Well, that's morbid, so let's move off of that uh, rapidly. And now let's talk about the other variables. The other variables... Which are in the workbook. That are in talk. the workbook. Okay. Mm-hmm. Says, how do you get a summary of your life so you know where you are and where you're going to go? Well, perhaps you are in a 30-year mortgage and you're 14 years from paying it off. The advertisers would like for you to come in and rapidly set you up because you can save 1% interest and want you to refinance. Many people don't realize that the first several years of any mortgage, whether it's the old one or the new one, the first several years is majority of the payment is going to interest. So they say, well, we're going to reduce your monthly payment, but now for the next five years, you're going to pay mostly interest. If you look at that in the real understanding of how it works, you might find out that it's just best to discipline yourself and go ahead and pay the 14 years off. In addition to that, we have a strategy that will help you accelerate that and pay it off without refinancing. So in the end of the conclusion of all of these processes, you kept some of the money instead of giving it to the people who are in the money business. People in the money business rent money for a fee. Mm. The reason currency is called currency is because money to work has to be in current. It has to be flowing. If they can get your money flowing to their coffers, then they're winning. And guess what you're doing? You're watching your money not work for you. So the workbook helps bring this together to where people can actually look into it and say, oh, I hadn't thought of this, I hadn't thought of that. And ultimately the idea is to get that workbook to where you can get a grip on that. So Randall, can you tell us then how and how can that workbook be obtained? Well, they can either contact you at at the radio or they can contact me and I would like to give my Thank you. email address, mm-hmm. if that's okay. Yes, it is. Uh, my email address is urllc dot client at gmail dot com. U R stands for unlimited resources, so it's urllc dot client at gmail dot com. I would welcome anyone to reach out. Awesome. Awesome. So this is going to be a monthly series, um, and, it, and it's identified as Making Sense, C-E-N-T, dollar sign, out of money. Um, Randall will be here every second Friday. Is that correct? Correct. Right here at 95.7 FM WELT, and he's going to walk us through the process of understanding money i have some really um interesting questions but i don't i don't know can i just ask one of these questions and it really is with your through your professional view um do you think and i feel comfortable asking you this that people of different genders and age and culturally look at money differently absolutely Mm-hmm. The greatest generation after World War II, they were so happy that they didn't die in the war and they came home and rolled their sleeves up and that generation built America as we know it today. Mm-hmm. They were so hard set on building their security for their children that then the next generation that came up, the baby boomers, they became uh, obsessed with making money and some of the entitlement started to creep in. And if I may, as I answer your question about yes. these different genders and, and demographics and generations, uh, what, what crept in then was, remember, I was sh- I'm going to share a little f- funny story that will illustrate this. Okay. So the baby boomer generation were 
raised, and all of a sudden mom started working, and they had two incomes so that they could buy more things. And they largely ran around the country in station wagons. And the baby boomer says, I will never own a station wagon. This is so (laughs) uncool. But when they grew up and they started having babies, then Detroit figured out that they still needed something to haul all of them, so they created something called the minivan, which is just a reconfigured station wagon, if you look at it. What they didn't realize is that while Congress was talking about all the great things they could do for taxes, they said, we're going to stop taxing families. But they increased the tax on minivans. So they were taxing families, and the families didn't realize it. So what happened? That generation created huge portfolios of stocks and bonds and, you know, their 401ks, their retirement plans. Then, as the next generation came along, you realize that we now have people who have never seen a telephone tied to a wall. Mm -hmm. They've never seen an 8-track player. They... Not only did the culture change what they are accustomed to, it changed the understanding of money because many people have always had it in such abundance that they could go to ballet and take piano lessons and play soccer and play football. And every kid got so busy that all the parents do is haul these children back and forth to activities. And what kept that going? The currency of money flowing into the system. The kids grew up thinking, when I need to do this, I need to do that. I want to do this. They just say to the parent, can I? And they hand them a card, and they don't even understand that the card has the credit card has to be paid. But that thought process of money, but there's an awakening. At the point in anyone's life where someone realizes, I don't have enough cash, and I don't have enough credit, and someone finally told me no. That's the wake-up call. So I submit that every gender, every race, every demographic, every generation has a different view about money, but they all have the wake-up call when there's not enough. Wow. Awesome. How are you going to wake us up these next several months? Well, (laughs) I've already reached out to some of my... uh, uh, colleagues. First of all, I'd like to share that I sell no product, but I have formed alliances and collaborative efforts with multiple people that do sell product. And so I've already reached out to people that I can bring in as experts, uh, one who will talk to us about credit repair, one who will come and talk to us about senior elder care law, Medicare supplements, et cetera, et cetera. Someone that will talk to us about the Affordable Care Act and how do you set up your health insurance properly. Someone that will talk to us about life insurance. Someone that will talk to us about mortgages, how to qualify for a mortgage. Someone will talk to us about buying real estate or selling real estate so you can buy your first home or sell a home that you've been in if you want to downsize. So I've already started reaching out to these people to bring them in to hopefully be a resource to this audience. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm excited about this. Um, what is left to share this first Making Sense Out of Money session? Um, probably the last thing I would like to share. Mm-hmm. I actually took a, a photo of the TV screen the other day, just prior to that I met with you. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about people that, are lamenting, crying, griping over the fact that they're not getting a tax return this year. Let me tell you, the tax return is the return of an interest-free loan to the U.S. government. And this is a bipartisan statement. If they had elections at the end of April, after everyone paid their tax bill, we would elect different officials. But they have this slow effect on us with withholding taxes Mm -hmm. that that tiny little incremental amount that comes out every paycheck we become uh, inoculated to kind of go to sleep that well they take that out always knowing that in april people boast about the great return they got it's not a great return if your money was asleep all year long and you got no interest on money that the government held for you with no interest so People are now 
going to the news reporters and saying, I didn't get as good a return. Well, if you got more money every week in your paycheck, then not getting more back in April is an okay thing because your family was improved as you were going through. So these are these are not even controversial statements. These are just facts. And when when we go through it and start to appeal the onion and understand how money works and why it can work for you at any level you find yourself, I help people start businesses, I help people manage businesses, I help people sell businesses, and I help people who work for other people find these pitfalls for themselves so that they have a GPS to drive their money and work well. Awesome. So let, let's let talk again before you we sign off how the starting process is the workbook. Yes. That's and the workbook can be obtained by you through, can you give your email address again? Yes, urllc.client at gmail.com. Okay, okay. So give them a contact, Randall. Start that workbook and be ready for April. Very good. Very good. Thank you, sir. You are listening to Speak Now with Jenna and Randall Morrison at 95.7 FM WELT.